So what is special about this animation? It's a character animation, okay. That's a motion capture animation which I just used from the content browser. But the interesting thing here is that the camera moves sort of with a character and follows him on a dolly which is quite high up really maybe three meters high so the camera slowly moves and then when he starts running the camera gets a little bit closer to him and moves faster as well so lots of things in this scene look very natural so the ordinary viewer would say well yeah it's a nice scene he's running and we're seeing him run but how do we achieve this okay windows uh, general editors content browser uh, we need a motion capture uh, file here and um, well I'm, I'm not satisfied with the uh, variety we have here, but uh, maybe we can choose the run, which is a, a bit short as, a f uh, as far as I remember. And um, the character is uh, very big, and we scale him down first in order to get things a little bit more organized in the center of the grid here, or close to the grid, really. So um, the character is currently here, and we can scale him down even further and then uh, let's move him to the beginning of that grid just to get an impression about um, the dimension so that's basically where he stops um, and you see that the the arrows here for the translation um, always stay at the same place they're here now they're here again they still stay stay here because they are just basically telling us uh, how to position and orient the character uh, it doesn't have to do anything with the motion capture data we need to know this for further uh, evaluations okay so what we're going to do now is um, we uh, make this animation which is basically stopping at 70 frame 70 uh, we make it uh, longer uh, and the simple way to make it longer is just by um, putting, him, putting him into slow motion. So let's go to Windows. It's an animation thing, animation editor. And the time editor uh, is one of the choices we can uh, have here. With the run reference selected, we add the content from the scene. And that's the animation clip. I don't want to explain the time editor here, but basically we're in this icon now. This icon means that we can shorten or, or long uh, make the clips longer. But this icon is the one we need that stretches the time. So uh, we frame 200. We want to make him run really long, and that's basically uh, it. So we have an animation which is 200 frames now slow motion yeah but that doesn't matter for that purpose because we are talking about constraints and not about character animation today so he walks there uh, everything is fine now we need a curve curve surfaces polygon tap curve surfaces tap let's um, use this icon here and draw a line like this and uh, in order to make that camera move a little bit more bumpy we press the key f8 which brings up the uh, component selection and well you see all the colors here from yellow to red uh, if you have the key b pressed last time you used that tool if you press it again you get a, a, a more straight selection like this where we can create some bumps up and down And if we want to move the whole uh, curve in, in a direction in a smooth way, we just uh, press B again and maybe do something like this. Uh, press F8, so we're back in the uh, object selection mode now. Uh, now we need a camera. Create cameras. Camera. We've got three types of camera. Uh, we choose the first one. 
Uh, it looks into the wrong direction, but it well, it just sits there. Now we need to constrain it. The constraints are an animation thing in Maya, so you need to go to the animation menu set here, and here you have the constraints. Now um, you want to constrain that camera to that curve. That's the first thing we need to do. It should dolly along that curve. So uh, under constraints you have parent, point, orient, scale, aim, pole, vector, motion path. That's what we'll need. Attach to a motion path, meaning we'll attach the camera to the curve. Uh, the uh, constraints commands always work in the same way in um, Maya. You always uh, select the master first. That's the curve we're going to constrain something to. So that's the master and then the slaves. I'm using the plural now because you could use several slaves. For example, if you have five cameras, you could all constra constrain them all now. Basically, you select the camera and all the other objects you want to constrain to that curve. In this case, only the camera. And now we go to constrain, motion paths, and we add the uh, attach uh, the camera to the motion path. It sits right here, and that's what it does. When we look at the scene from the top, of course the camera follows the path but does not look at the cam character. It looks like in this direction. Let's have a look uh, how we do this. Um, constraint and uh, among the selection of constraints we have the aim constraint. That basically means what it says. The camera should aim the character. So uh, we need to find the aim really. Well the aim is easy to find you think. So you pick the skin here and the skin has no icon to move it because it's totally dependent on the run reference. And the run reference has that icon which sits always at the same place. Remember, from at the beginning we analyzed that, it always sits here. It's a basic positioning um, icon. So. Uh, what icon do we find here in our character where we can constrain the aim of our camera to? Well, easy once you know how to do it. Open the run reference here and here starts the hierarchy of the joints. It's really big. I press the shift key and click here. So that's all the bones you have, all the, actually all the joints. So I close it again. Uh, but basically here are the top joint is ideal. You can use any other joint really, uh, like on, in the foot, so the camera would focus on the foot really. Um, but that's something where you can constrain things to. And um, now look at this, um, the translate arrows. I stop here now. The translate are always at the hip, so that's almost perfect really. We could use a joint here in the head, but uh, let's stick to this. Again, this is the master. We're going to constrain the camera aim to that object here. That's the master. So we have the master selected first and then we uh, control select or shift select the camera. And now check the orientation. The camera looks here. Now we go to constrain and aim. And uh, what happens often in this situation is that the camera does not aim the character. But in fact it does. If you think of the camera in a 90 degree rotation, it's uh, 90 degrees, it focuses there. And uh, when we start the animation, you see that angle is always facing the character. So how do we actually rotate the camera? Don't pick the camera rotation attribute here. It's just, uh, it's not good. Um, we need to change the aim of the camera. So we go to the aim node here. That's the motion path. And here is the aim constraint. And uh, 
I don't want to explain the, this whole window. I'm always in this situation experimenting with the aim vector, which is currently set to 1 in x. Um, let's set it to 1 here and to 0 in x. Much better. It looks straight away from our character. And now, how about minus 1? You see, I've tried it out before. And now the camera uh, orientation is perfect. What we'll do next is we briefly press the spacebar in order to get the four view. And uh, we select one of the windows here to look through our camera now, because that's the interesting thing, really. So uh, with the camera selected here, you middle mouse drag it in any of these windows here, that one, for example, and now you see uh, the camera view. So um, the whole hierarchy of the constraints is so perfect that you can now change anything with a curve, for example. You can put the, move the curve up and down. You see the camera always focuses on our person. So we can have a look like that. Or we can change CVs here, like this, go far away here. Okay, press F8 again and look through the camera view here. Very far away and closer again. So what I showed you in this brief demonstration is how to animate the camera via two constraints. One is the constraint to that animation curve, the dolly right, so to say, and one is the aim orientation, which makes the camera focus on the object all the time. A final remark, when we created the camera right here, we had the option to create just a camera, that's what we did, and the option to create a camera and an aim. So why didn't we create a camera and an aim? Well, we could have done. Uh, the, the camera and aim basically creates a group where you have an aim locator and you can point constraint, constraint here under constraint, po point constraint, that locator to the hip. You could do this, but uh, you run into a minor problem with a rotation because the camera has a rotation along that path and then you tell the camera at the same time uh, f uh, rotate according to where the point constraint walks or moves. So um, you have to fix this uh, and uh, I think this is the way the way I showed you uh, which is a little bit more easy. However the camera with the aim has a big advantage because the camera could for example um, follow that character all the time and then focus on something totally different here in the background happening, maybe somebody sitting down or uh, dancing. Uh, so you would just move the aim from him over here and the camera would just uh, lose the sight of him and uh, slowly move back there and uh, see that person. But um, this is more sophisticated and this was a straightforward tutorial, I guess. Um, have fun.